What's her name? Yannicka. Yannicka. Yeah, Yannicka. I think my entire life, sometimes when I go to bed, I have this sensation of swinging. Mm -hmm. um, and it's been very re relaxing to put me to bed. Um, and it, it only happened every now and then. But now I feel like it's intensified. And especially like here, I feel it a lot. Um. Take your time, we have time. And I don't know if it's something I should go with. Sometimes I've made myself feel swinging. It's very relaxing, but now I feel it's very strong. Um. I don't know, like, because I've always had it, I didn't think it was a bad thing. Now, I don't know, like, if I meditate, should I focus on it or should I focus my mind? Mm. Since when have you had this swinging? I think always, as a child. Since like, a child? It happened rarely. You know, maybe one week, once a month, you know. Um, but now, I think almost every night I have this... <laughs> relaxing swinging so it's it's not unpleasant it's quite pleasant sometimes it's like swirling as well um, but yeah especially here in Tiro I, I meditated one day and I just felt like the whole floor was swirling. can I ask you do you do you have a specific practice you undertake um, or, a, or a system or a guru or a no, I, no, I, I only seriously, well not seriously, but I only started meditating about six months ago mm. and I was reading a book. So now I just focus on my breath, so mm -hmm. breathing and breathing down. Have you experienced this intensification of that circular motion or the swinging motion after you started these meditations? I think so, yeah. I think so. so what we are looking at over here is actually a disturbed kundalini. Generally you can know that because of the swaying motion. It's all fine, it'll be all good, don't worry. It'll be fine. It's starting to actually... It's starting now? No, no, it's, no. it's good to actually know what's going on. I'll tell you what it is exactly, then you'll know it, okay? So generally, kundalini shakti is an energy which is at the bottom of the spinal cord and she sends out this energy throughout a lifetime whenever a body is in trauma. Whether it is physical, material trauma or emotional trauma or conceptual trauma or other kinds of creative trauma where the system is incapable of a unity consciousness or a pluriform consciousness any of these layers of consciousness, when they are traumatized, she sends this energy and equalizes things. Sometimes what happens is she gets disturbed. If there is too much meditation, if yoga practices are undertaken which are not guided properly, if there is extreme alcohol consumption, lots of japa or mantra chanting for long hours, any practice that puts the body in a state of, of, you can say of trauma in a sense, can disturb this energy and then it starts to move the systems in different ways. Some people experience it as migraine headaches, as nervous system disorders, as, as twitches, as spinal cord disorders, as swayings like this. So, when a person has something like that, it's important to just... The most important thing to keep a lifetime of quiet in the system is to always be in surrender. If ever you don't see me again and if you're somewhere in life and if ever suddenly something is happening in the body and you feel this is 
not really, you know, I don't feel comfortable. Something is going on, I, I don't know. The thing to do then just bend down, bend down, bend down, bend down, bend down, bend down. Be in surrender, surrender, surrender. My soul, my soul, the soul, the soul, the soul. Atman, Atman, surrender, surrender. And it will quiet down. The only way to to actually deal with symptoms of a disturbed Kundalini is actually to be in surrender, to bend down and surrender. We've seen many, 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 many cases of this. This is clearly that. Don't worry but it'll be fine. Just don't go into meditations because it'll just get more and more and more. So yeah. I, I shouldn't meditate. You can meditate, but little, not, not like half an hour or forty-five minutes. Ten minutes here, ten minutes there. Mm -hmm. That's different. Okay. The whole body sways, no? <laughs> yeah. And turns also a little bit. Not sometimes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That is for sure that. And don't forget what I've told you. If you never come back again. Always remember, surrender. And if your system is not able to surrender in that moment or it doesn't know what it is, remember this satsang. Okay? So, did you hear what I said? Yes. Remember this satsang. Yeah. In a moment, if there is distress. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. How long do you think this will... Sorry? What? What will take? But it's waiting to stop. See, it will stop gradually, but you have to take up some practices of surrender for that. Okay. Why this happens, no? Is because the ego is very big, there is no purification of the chakras, and practices are undertaken, not in your case, but in the case of other people. They take up spiritual practices, but the teachers don't teach them surrender, so nothing is cleansed, nothing is cleared, and these extreme practices are undertaken, and it results in, in physical problems, emotional problems, conceptual problems, transformative problems, unity consciousness problems, and pluriform consciousness problems, all sorts of things keep on, because there's no surrender learnt in the system. In, you know, I can tell you, for example, when I was a little child, my grandmother at that time, there was somebody who had come and was teaching Hatha Yoga in Bombay and we were saying, oh, we want to go and learn. And she was like, no, 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 you can't learn. What is the lineage? Who are the masters? Who are the students? To learn Hatha Yoga from somebody was a huge process of checking out who that person is, what are they teaching, what have they learned, how many, who are their students, talking to the student, like, it was not what it has become today. So, a lot of yoga practices can, if they are simple exercises and kept simple, Surya Namaskar, that was done by everybody, Kapalabhati, all the simple ones is different, but holding bandhas for an hour and it's putting the body under such stress that it can disturb the Kundalini. And it'll take some time as you go into surrender and practice the practice of bending to the soul, bending, bending. Discerning, is this the soul that is making this action happen or is it the ego? You have to understand that there is a soul there and there is an ego that is stopping you from listening to the soul, from following it. So you keep bending to the soul. And if ever it starts to become extreme, then you bend down, bend, 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 surrender, surrender, surrender. Always. What is your mother tongue? Estonian. So whatever your word is for surrender, 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 surrender. I'll first her and then you, her hand was up first and then I'll take
Um, I was here yesterday and you said not to meditate or chant or do yoga too intensively because that might yes. make worse. Um, but I suppose I've come to India for three months to do all of those things. So how should I spend my time here to still be, you know, kind of, I'm on a spiritual path and I still want to go yes. along that path, but I know I have to take it easy and that's fine, but what is the best way to approach my time here if I shouldn't attend all of these activities? Well, as I said, if you meditate for 10 or 15 minutes and you're present, you're here and now, this, this, the, the, the Shakti, the Kundalini will not, will not... Why does that happen? Why does the Kundalini do that? It's because through, through certain practices she's being disturbed, basically. That's, uh, there's no other way to express it. So, if you can't do those practices, you can still do... You can still, for example, take walks. Mm -hmm. You can start to look at what is around. Like, are you actually looking at beings, you know? Look, look at him, for example, he's looking at you. So, if you walk on the street, you look at a being. Now, you don't have to look in the eyes deeply or something like that, but just to feel the person, you know? That's a meditation. And it is not a meditation which will start to disturb Ma, because it is part of your of your corporeal, terrestrial, bodily mandate. Mm -hmm. Or you look at a tree, or you look at a human and see a tree in them, because in every human is a tree as well, is an animal as well, is a plant as well, in their genetic inheritance. So, there's a lot you can do in a day which keeps you present and here and now, and and connected with the other, connected with the other, connected with your truth. Mm -hmm. I understand it, yeah. And take up practices, Nishmanda, take up practices that, that support presence, that support your being here and now, mm -hmm. with your eyes open. Anything that keeps your eyes open is fine. <laughs> okay. You can listen to music, there's so much music going on. Yeah. You can make music mm -hmm. with other people, there are so many groups where people are singing together, doing bhajans and so on. Oh yes, yes, that's what I was planning to do, to sing and learn bhajans. If you close your eyes and start going out, then she'll start swaying okay. you around. Okay. I mean, you can sway, but then the thing is that I have to, t I have to tell you, it's Kundalini, this is, it's yeah. not anything else, and mm -hmm. you better not try to mess with her. Yeah, of course, yeah. You know? Yeah. So, you, even if you sing bhajans, you can't keep your eyes, because when you keep your eyes closed, this, the system starts to move out, and then the swaying will go more and more and more and more and more. Yeah. And if you keep your eyes open and you're present and you're connected with the other, then everything is more quiet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And Love. deep meditation, definitely not. not. Okay. No. Lifelong not. Yeah. Why do you need, you, you have the soul, why don't you take up the practice of feeling the, the Antar Atman? You can do the golden meditation, you were here yesterday, right? Yes. yes. Do the golden Kriya. Kriya. Yeah, okay. that's a Kriya which keeps you in touch with the Source, here and now, present. Mm -hmm. Even if you close your eyes, you feel the Master within, you feel the... You feel, you feel, you bend, you bend, you bend. You know what I mean? You bend, bend, bend. You feel the Soul, you feel... That's a big, that's a tough practice. You want to practice? Practice that. Okay, yeah. Presentness. Presentness is not a conceptual exercise, it is being here and now, actually being aware that you have toes, that you feel your toes, you feel your fingertips, you're present, you're extended outward into every cell of the body with awareness that 
that consciousness of itself in the very cells of the body, that will quiet Ma. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. She wants you to be here. Mm -hmm. And what will happen if I quiet her down? Will she go back or what happens? So in your case, if you go into practices which take you out, then she'll start again. Okay. You can test it and see. I don't know you if I try. want to. <laughs> well, you've tested it already, you know that that's well, what happens. Yes, but this was the first time I arrived at Tiro, I just felt it very strong. Now it's, it's not that strong. Then you, yeah. can, you can always... See, you don't have to believe what I'm saying. <laughs> Spirituality is a matter of experiencing things, testing. It's a field of experimentation. It is not a top-down knowledge given to you by somebody, aisa karo, vaisa karo, ye karo, ho karo, and then, you know, you'll go to heaven. It's about experiencing the truth here and now in the body and surrendering to it. So, you can take up a practice, a meditation, see if it starts to move. You didn't know what it was till now. No, I And I told you what it is. Yes. Now you know what it is. I so know, it's amazing. Yeah. It is amazing. And now you have that... Lifelong you'll know what it is when that happens mm -hmm. and you'll know what to do. I told you in a worst case scenario, if things really go out of hand, then bow down, remember you're in this satsang, Surrender. remember me, it will quiet down. Yes. For sure, because we've done it with other people. Okay. It seems to be a way it works. Okay. You know? Mm -hmm. Because you... See, once people start meddling with Kundalini and once she... Because Ma is awake. Kundalini Shakti is awake. We don't have to awaken Kundalini Shakti. It's ridiculous to even like say something like that. You know, it's like if your mother is in the kitchen and she's making a nice big soup, which she's planning to feed you for the whole next week. Every day one bowl because she doesn't have time to cook every day, let's say. And you keep going into the kitchen and you keep on poking her with a knitting needle. At one point she's going to come out and just start shouting at you, like, get lost now. You know what I mean? <laughs> this is exactly what happens with Kundalini Shakti. She's doing her thing, People go and start poking her and prodding her and trying to make her... trying to awaken, like, it's like... it's like... I didn't do this... Yes, purposely. exactly. Yes. In your case it happened, but I'm saying there are many practices yes. that are poking her and yeah. Tr yeah. trying to make her wake up. Yeah. You ran into the kitchen and by mistake you had a needle in your hand and it went like that. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. um, one more question. Um, that's okay. This like hissing sound. Yes. And um, it, it also came about six months ago and it is very calming. There's nothing bad about it. So, and at first I only heard it when I was meditating or reading meditational books. But now I also, <clears throat> excuse me, hear it when I wake up and when I go to bed. And maybe here it's a little bit higher pitched. Um, is that also... The yes, that is definitely a sign of the Shakti. Okay. That's why when you meditate, you hear it. Yeah, yeah. Well, when <laughs> I'm relaxed... Because system, your systems are not meant to go into those long hours of meditation. It takes one out of the system. The idea is to be here and now, that's why this body is here in the first place. So, the less you do of all that stuff, the more yeah. she'll quiet down. But the question arises then, how then to connect with the Truth? Why, why do people do all these practices? Because they want to... they want to touch it with the fingertips, you know, the... the Source. And that's what this is about. It is about... realizing that... you have always been in connection with the Truth. But that connection has been weakened because of a growing ego that society has slapped on you. Where did you grow up? In which place? In, in Estonia. In Estonia. Yes. So, you grew up in a, in a culture which... 
it's has like, to, it's yeah. like a po post Soviet Union country, so mm -hmm. people are quite closed and cold. You don't talk about things. But um, I live in Ireland now, and that's much different. You know, people are open and funny, and it's just a different environment. Now, I'm sure Estonia has changed now, but it's been 10 years since I was there, so that is my memory of it. There's many good things as well, I'm not going to say there isn't, but yeah. Well, you also have a genetic inheritance, a genetic imprint of the culture that you grew up in, which is very, very strongly influenced by religion. Uh, no, actually, Estonia is quite atheist country. Talking about... Oh, okay, <laughs> sorry. Way before. So, it is a strong a culture that has been strongly influenced by religion, and, and what happens then is that the, the entire society uses religion to perpetuate its greed. It happens everywhere where religion is at play. Those are, those are givens, but the thing, what happens is that the human being becomes, pays the price for society perpetuating itself, growing its wealth, and so on. And that price that the human being pays is called ego. And ego is what stands in the way between you and the truth and your soul, which you, as a child, knew. Those of you who can go back into your childhoods will remember a very strong connection with something that impulsed you. You didn't have to think much, you just did things. You ran here, you ran there, you did this, you did that, you sat down, you stood up, you, you played, you cried, you shouted, you didn't shout, you, you did things which were not acceptable. All of this was coming from that. And as you grew, society ensured that you only do things that will make greedy capital richer, actually. <laughs> so now, the process is to find back to that truth. And the way you find back to your Antar Atman, your inner Guru, your su the Supreme Consciousness individualized within yourself, is to bend down, look, search, feel, distinguish. Where is this action coming from? Is it coming from the ego or is it coming from that? And gradually you cleave a path through the jungle of the ego to the soul. And that is the practice. So, what I mean is that when you, when you finish satsang, you go out, you decide you want to have a tea. Then you stand there and you ask, is it the thing for me to do? And try to see if you can hear the difference between the loud voice of the ego and that almost imperceptible impulse that arises from the Antar Atman, which is the soul, which is the master. It is a material thing, whatever anybody says. It's material, and you'll feel that impulse as a child feels that impulse. That is your sadhana, that is your practice. Why would you want to take up a practice that makes you start swaying and hissing, and at one point things will go? into a direction which, which is not very pleasant. Um, I think those are very wise words and um, I thank you so much.